One of the test series that is currently happening is a two-match series between Sri Lanka and Pakistan in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And it's quite an interesting little series that's happening. Unfortunately, it's only two matches rather than three or four, so we're not going to see as much cricket as we ought to. But as far as this contest is concerned, this should be a very interesting little battle because both Pakistan and Sri Lanka are in comparable situations in terms of their team development structure and current position within their journeys to developing a world-class team. And what I mean by this is that both have recently gone through having some of their great players retire and leave the team. Sri Lanka had Mahela Jayawardena and Kumar Sangakkara and Dilshan and Tilakaratna Dilshan. And Pakistan just recently had the retirements of Mishbar ul Haq and Yunus Khan. So we're just focusing on the batsmen right now, not on the bowlers, but in both cases, very experienced, very talented batsmen with many thousands of runs under their belts across the forms of international cricket, all of a sudden are gone, which makes those teams' batting lineups comparatively inexperienced, comparatively weaker in terms of core run making ability. And so, so far, it looks like this game might be either it's this. And so, this current game that's happening right now, the first test, will either be a draw or a Pakistan victory because Pakistan would be batting last. And if they're able to bowl out Sri Lanka in the third innings of the match and then chase down the runs, they could win. But if Sri Lanka hold off through the morning and afternoon sessions, then they'll tie, then they'll, then they'll draw the game. But it's inconceivable that Pakistan would lose. So we're yet to see a real, we're yet to see a real full display of these two teams in what they can show us. The cricket that has been The cricket that we have seen so far has been very interesting. Both Pakistan and Sri Lanka scored about 400 in their first innings, and Sri Lanka in their second innings are 4 for 90, with a very small lead coming to the final day. So there's, the cricket has been good, but we've still got a lot more to see to see whether or not these two teams can actually, when push comes to shove, when the stakes are down, when runs need to be made by someone, will it be you stand up and take charge? Whether or not these teams have what it takes. And obviously Abu Dhabi is not the best place for this sort of high stakes cricket because the pitch is quite slow and there's not enough carry to the wicket keeper and wickets are just not falling and runs are difficult to make. So it's not the best venue for high stakes cricket but that's okay the cricket is good and we're seeing where these two teams are at in terms of their developmental structures and routines because those players are huge particularly Sri Lanka has been suffering because they relied on Jaya Wardena and Sangakkara to bat at three and four and
and considering the mountains of runs that those two scored in their careers, the fact that they're now gone means that they've had to call on people like An Ang like Chandimal and Tiramani to basically be the frontline batsmen from the support cast to the lead cast all at once and there's a lot of pressure on them uh, Pakistan's a bit different they seem to have a bit more of a core a bit more of a core cater of moderately experienced moderately aged um, with a certain amount of good performances under their belt like Asad Shafiq those types of players so it will be it will be interesting to see what we what happens in the next test hopefully the pitch is a bit faster and we'll see whether or not uh, these two batting lineups are really able to make big runs when the chips are down when the pressure is up and someone has to take charge <laughs>